Buenos Dias from <laughs> Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. This is my good buddy Jamie. He invited Brookie and I to come fish with him in Mexico. They own a fishing company or fishing charter called High Tides Fishing down here in Puerto Vallarta. So we're gonna send it offshore, look for some mahi and stuff, right Jamie? Today we will have some conditions. So we're gonna try to go all the way out. Maybe also look for a big marlin. Oh yeah. There's been some mahis and Maybe selfish, we have a little bit of everything these days. And we got the lovely ladies. This is Olga, this is... Hi. My girlfriend, girlfriend. Olga. <laughs> and then of course, Brookie, tilt the camera behind you. Good Drink morning. <laughs> so we are very excited. This is Brooke and I's first time in Mexico. So let's go. All right guys, we made it out here on about a 50 mile run and we're headed to an area that Jamie's got out here that holds some really big Kuberas. And he says a lot of marlin come through, but right now we're getting the spread out. It's like two foot out here. Jamie says this is rough for Mexico. Usually the ocean is like the swimming pool, he says. This is the first mate right here. Grief is good luck. I swear, anytime a dog shows up on a boat, they're fishy people. That is one fishy dog right there. And dogs are usually good luck. Mucho grande pescado today. Ah, uh, I know. I spent a lot. <laughs> this is that giant peak. So we were just in 500 feet of water and it comes all the way up here. And Jamie said that the shallowest, it'll come just 80 feet underneath the surface. So you gotta think. We're in the middle of nowhere. There's just a bunch of big blue water around us. Fish like to congregate around anything they can find. There you go. There we go. On bottom? Yeah, no, that's a fish. No, yeah, on bottom. On bottom? On bottom, on the slow pitch. Yeah. All right, guys, I'm embarrassed to show you. This is my first. Oh, no. My first fish in Alaska was a giant halibut. My first fish in Mexico is this guy right here. All right, <laughs> see you later, dude. That jig legit weighed more than the grouper. That's a 200 gram jig. That fish was not more than 200 grams. I promise you that. I got something a little bigger than Victor, I think. Uh, that's fighting like a bonito now. Yeah, I can see oh, yeah. it. The coolest thing about this boat is that tuna tube right there. I don't think I've ever fished on a boat with a tuna tube. Like pelagic bait fish, you can't just stick them in a live well like those goggle eyes are back there. The reason being is bonito, mahi, sailfish, wahoo, all these fish, they need to constantly be swimming. So the cool thing, this tuna tube is gonna flush water up onto this fish's gills from the bottom and it's constantly doing that. That way that fish doesn't have to exert any energy and it's just going around his gills. If we put them in a live well, even if it's a big live well, They'll swim circles for 10 minutes and they just die. This thing will stay alive in there for hours. It's gonna be Vic's first Pacific Bonito. And look like we've been putting them in the tuna tubes. Jamie says this is the number one bait for big fish around here. Cuberos, big rooster fish will eat it, marlin, sailfish. I'll tell you what, they fight like our Bonito, they don't give up. We're gonna slow troll these guys. And he says that the Cuberos will even come up top and eat them. That is gonna be our bait. Very similar looking to our Benito, but you guys see that the top, they have more of a, uh, of a solid stripe, whereas we have broken bars with our Benitos. Okay, so Jamie's putting out our first Benito on the outrigger. So that's gonna be the far bait. We got two more live to troll. Okay, so you really want to fill the top of the skull there. You don't wanna hurt the eye and go as, as high as you can. And... There. Oh. Once, if you can twice, if not, no. Okay. Ready? If you hook that bonita with a hook in the skin, number one, it's gonna hurt, hurt the bonita a lot more than bridling it. Number two, a billfish, a dolphin, a kubera, whatever's gonna eat this, now that hook is maximally exposed. You got a huge bait. So even though these are big fish, 
if part of your hook is in the bait, the chance of them not getting hooked, not gonna get hooked is gonna go up. We got maximum hook exposure by bridling it. And the best thing about bridling it also is that bait is gonna swim as freely as possible. Cause all he has, he's only attached by a little thin piece of yarn rather than a hook that's gonna limit his movement. Feel if he, if you feel like rocks, okay? He's yeah. still running? Yeah, he's still running. Okay, talk to us. If he turns and come our way, okay? Woo! What a hit, Woo! huh? Oh, now it does feel like he's in something, but it's coming out. Yes? Yeah. Pressure him, pressure him as hell. A lot of oh, he's pressure. Out, he's out, he's out, you he's got out. him? Yeah. That will be a cubero, eh, buddy? Yeah. This is insane. After you feel like he's out, Victor, make sure you lower a little bit that drag, okay? okay. Absolutely unreal. It's still, he's still in something, but I can feel he's coming out. We're gaining on him. And that's our smallest leader, of course. He's gonna come out, Jamie. He's shaking. gonna come out. You guys see that line kind of rubbing? That same pinnacle we were fishing earlier, this rock, that Kubera wants to go in there. But he's not, because he's coming home to Papa Vic. Okay, maybe we try to get on top of him. You see how fast this thing yeah. goes in the rock? Oh, he yeah. hated on the surface, like I told you. That's insane. And he, like that, he went 90 feet in the rocks. Oh. Yep. Yep. Kuberas. Still exciting as hell. <laughs> we just hooked a Kubera on a Bonita while trolling <laughs> on top of the water in Mexico. After, what, five minutes of trolling the Bonito? Man, they, they want those Bonitos. Yeah. And smaller size. Reef knows, this dog knows when something's going on because he was going crazy. <laughs> Probably 25 pounds of drag, just stripping <laughs> it off. Reef says, where's my fish? Oh, something happened, the eyes there. That's <laughs> 150 or 130? 130. 130 pound leader. Ripped to shreds like child's play, look at that. Crazy. Lisa, Lisa, dale, 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 There's some action today. Something he heated it and I freaking pulled it out of his mouth. Dale poquito. That's when we got real shallow over it in like 100. I thought I didn't want to see it. Yeah, that was a marlin, huh? That was a marlin. Uh huh. Hundred percent. Watch this. Wow. Yep. That's the bill marks. See? These are the bill hitting. Boom, boom. I don't marlin. Marlin. Okay. So now we only have one bonito left, so we're gonna need to go on the bonito mission again. Let's do it. <laughs> and put some fresh bonito out there, because as you see, they don't last long. No, they don't. That's insane. We've trolled three bonitos, two got hit, one's still out there, and like he was showing you guys, you see all those like little slash marks on that bonita, a cubera? Cuberas have gnarly mouths and crazy teeth. That fish would have been ripped to shreds, probably cut in half. Kuberas, if you guys have seen Brick and I's video where we caught them in Key West, they actually eat lobster. That's like one of their favorite foods and lobster have extremely hard shells. So it's it might be tough for some of you guys to visualize them eating a bonita, but that's a nice soft meal for them. And they have these huge teeth they can just chomp down. But like Jamie said, he was disappointed because that was a marlin. So maybe we didn't let him eat long enough, but it's it's tough, you never know. You either gotta stick it to him if it's a Kubera, pull him out of the rocks, or you gotta let him eat long enough, but you don't know which one you're gonna hook if you're gonna get a marlin or a Kubera. What you said there is a big challenge. Yeah. You don't know what it's gonna be, and, no. it, and you feel him eat, and you're like, if it's another Kubera, I could break, stop him right now. Marlin will slash his bait, kill it, and then they don't have teeth. Billfish and a lot of pelagic fish have to eat things head first, so he's gotta orientate that bonita so he can swallow it head first. He's not gonna try to eat it sideways. A Kubera, he'll grab it wherever he can, munch on it, and swallow it. So since we only have one bonita left, what we're gonna do is put him in the tube, we're gonna try to catch two more, that way we control three again. 
because you guys saw how productive it was. So right now we're just trolling a little planer with a little squid lure. Perfect little imitation for a bait. Oh, that's a perfect size for that smaller lead. Yeah, I have light pressure on this one. Okay, I have 50 pound leader. If you feel like putting a little more, go ahead. It's 50 pound with circle. Come on. I don't feel any structure for now. I think we're good. Reef didn't freak out this time. How come? <laughs> she, no, she thinks we're playing. We played with her a couple of times, so now let me get that right out of you. I feel like we just got on top of this fish and now it kind of knows it's hooked. Whereas before it didn't. I mean, it's tough to picture a snapper or a grouper coming up and eating something like a bonita, but it happens. Victor, yeah. I dropped the jig and I hooked huh? right away. You did? Yeah. What do we got, Reef? Kubera? I got color, Jamie. It looks really silver. It looks yeah. like a pompano or some type of jack. It's not a Kubera, I'll tell you that. <laughs> No, it's a horse. It's a, a horse. Oh, side. nice! Uh, Look at this thing. Ice. There we go. Just be careful with the tail. I've never caught one of these things before. The tail is extremely sharp. What What do you call this? We call them ojo de perra or big eye trevally. Oh, so it's a trevally? Uh huh. It's really? part of the trevally family. Heck yeah, first trevally species for me ever. So this looks really similar to a fish we have in Florida called a horse eye jack. This is my first ever trevally. And if you guys know anything about trevally, trevally are the biggest jack species or like that jack family in the world. Giant trevally or GTs that are pretty common in the Pacific. But this is a smaller version of that. Such a cool animal and hard fighting. All right, so Jamie says that this fish is really good for sashimi, so guess what? He's coming home. He's not taking, right? No. Okay. That was on the surface. Oh my gosh. Oh, now he's Smoking, taking. smoking. But he's not going we down, We got right? hit, good. no, okay. no, he's going up. Perfect. We got hit on the bonita again. Woo -hoo -hoo. I'm feeling billfish, come on, jump. Oh my god. It's on top, right? I think so. I also think it's, it's not going down. I don't know. He's charging the boat now. This is interesting, huh? It did not shoot down like a Kubera would. Yeah, I want to say he's staying on top, Jamie. Yeah, I feel also like he's yeah. not very deep. Rainbow Runner would be fun. It's a Rainbow Runner. Big Rainbow, rainbow Runner. Big Rainbow yeah, Runner. Buddy. Oh Let me step in there when you can, okay? Huh? Let me step in there when you can oh, so I can get them. Smokes. Huge. Wow, Jamie. Heck yeah, Jamie. brother. Woo. Look at that. Beauty. Nice rainbow. That is unbelievable. I've, I didn't even know Rainbow Runners get that big. That's insane. Oh, yours. How, is this like a normal size you guys get? Normal or a little under. They get definitely bigger than that. Holy smokes, guys. This is a like 12 pound rainbow runner right here. Great fish, I love these. And to get them to eat at bait, see how small that mouth is? They yep. really need to, like you were saying with Marlon, make sure they're in line with it. And yep. And um, okay, this is when you gotta appreciate the colors. This is one of the coolest looking fish in the ocean. And I can tell you right now, I've had these in Florida. They make amazing sashimi, delicious sushi fish. Look at the colors on this thing. Super good fighters, delicious sushi, sashimi, quality meat, and just gorgeous to look at. I mean, look at this. These are a very pelagic fish. You'll find these a lot of times next to sharks, whale sharks, dolphins. Um, they're kind of scrap eaters a lot of the times. You'll see them next to sharks because when sharks eat something, just like a remora, these guys will feed on all the little scraps. Dale, dale, yes, dale, yes, dale, yes, dale, yes. Dale, dale. He's not in the rock yet. He was not, I felt it. Did he get in? No. No, that's Sigue le dando, sigue le dando. Bájale. Bájale. Okay. Oh, yeah. 
Come on. Mm. Horse him, horse him. Yes. Yes. Oh, we got him out, Jamie. Yes. That's the first part. When you're a hundred percent sure he's out, you're gonna lower that drag a little bit okay. when you gain some line. Bajale, mija. You feel like he's out? Uh, yeah. I okay. Think so. Okay. You guys saw Olga put it into overdrive. Just put it. So we went like 10, 15 knots. Because the theory is, even though they're still pulling drag and pulling away from you, the further you are away from that structure, that rock, that's where you want to be. So we got him. He's ours. So <laughs> we were in the middle of flaying this jack or trevally as you call it. I was about to do the other side and this rod just got hit. It was another Bonita. Is this on a weight, Jamie? No, this one was swimming by itself and it was the short one. Big head shakes. Big see head that? shake and Big. you can see the very intense fight at the beginning yeah. and after that you get that dead weight. You're, you might get, oh yes, these big head shake. I big love head it. Shake. I love it. It's one of your favorite fish to catch, right? It's one of my favorite because it's, you have to use strategy, power, a little bit of everything. Oh, I can tell you without a doubt, this is the biggest thing we've hooked all day. The biggest head shakes of anything. Now that I'm straight up and down with this fish, he's really pulling. He goes crazy. He's ripping. Put a little more on him. He goes too crazy. Oh. He's ripping. Oh yes. That is why you wait all day, no Victor? Yeah, we've been doing this all day. Jamie said, what do you guys want to do? And I said, hey man, I'm in it to win it. If we got to troll these bonitas all day, you know, this is a fish of a lifetime right here. You guys come here, book a trip with Jamie and Olga. High tides, fishing, Puerto, Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. And the cool thing about this is, is anytime we've Kubera fished, it's always been at night with the live lobster you guys see in South Florida. They have an incredible daytime Kubera fishery. But man, this fish just probably took another 100 feet of line, tried to go back to the bottom where he's comfortable. Jamie calls it their home. And you know the best part about Mexico? None of your fish get eaten by sharks. I see color. Yes. I got color. Yeah. I like it. Oh yeah, it's a snapper. Chubera! Oh my goodness. Look at that beast. That's Holy what, that's what we're out here for. That's what we're out here for, buddy. Look at oh that thing. Oh my man. gosh. Oh boy. Oh. Oh. Okay, good. Let me back up and get ready. Yep. You need help pulling him in? Yeah, yeah that's a no, I'll, I'm good. Are you sure? Yeah. Woo! Oh, yeah! Woo! Oh, baby! Yeah! 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 Yes! Woo! Oh, That's what we were oh after. God. Oh my god. That's the baby we were after, man. Oh. Oh, Look at that thing. Crap. Look at that. First of all, I gotta thank you. This is seriously, this is a fish of a lifetime for me. Thank you so much. Yeah, imagine getting bit by one of these things. Oh my goodness! <laughs> 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 Woo! If you guys haven't liked the video by now, like the video. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? We got giant Kuberas aboard. I, got, I gotta hand it to you. I mean, I knew they were big, but this is this is the biggest Kubera I've, I've ever caught or seen in person. It's insane. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Belly. <laughs> That's a Mustad Demon Circle hook in the corner of that fish's mouth. And you guys can save 20% off. Use code LANDSHARK. Link below. It's a Tenno Mustad Circle hook, isn't it? It's a Tenno. Yeah. And if you don't use these circle here, with you see these mouths. You can't. You can't have a hook be inside of there. Now you guys can see how this can eat a whole panita. <laughs> <laughs> we got it to the job. Oh yeah. Hey, yes. Come on. There we go. Incredible fish. Just look at the size of his mouth. And just these snapper are the largest snapper species in the world. And they definitely get the tallest. This thing is just a massive, massive fish extremely smart. Kuberas are probably the smartest fish I've ever encountered offshore. 
Look how he's got some like old scar. Yeah. Hey, they are fighters. I mean, I don't know if we can trust it. It's a Rapallo electronic scale, but we're at 47, 48 pounds, right around there. I think it's bigger. You guys comment below how big you think it is. It's saying it's only 48 pounds. I thought it was like in the 60 pound range. Reef is so excited to get off the boat. She can't wait. Right, Reef? Oh, oh gosh. my gosh. You guys are gonna see the scales on this fish is, look at that. Look at the size of this scale on that fish. We actually um, had some Kubera last night for dinner at the Hacienda, at the place we're staying, which is part of the all-inclusive package that um, Jamie and Olga offer. So we had someone else's Kubera snapper, and that's the cool thing is all the fish, the customers catch like us, whatever we don't eat can stay at the resort and then someone else can enjoy it, so we pass it forward. You know, I can honestly say, I don't think I've ever filleted fish on a dock, but it's really not that bad at all. We threw some ice on this Kubera, brined it. So it's it's nice and firm. It got firmed up for the ride home. Here's what I'm gonna do. Big fish like this, they're slimy and they're hard to hold. I poked a hole in there. Now I can use that as kind of leverage. Right over that rib cage, through those pin bones. What do you think about that, baby? Look at that slab of Kubera. With the best knives. You know I had to bring the Dexters. We brought a bunch of Dexters over for Jamie and Olga. Reef wants in on the action. You guys can save 20% off all Dexter knives. Use my code Landshark. This is the eight inch sport fish. Beautiful and great knife for a big fish like this. You know, this fish has a huge rib cage. I mean, look at this thing. You guys hear my knife along it. It's just massive. It's good for the power so you can really break through the pin bones and stuff, but we got plenty of meat and I'm very excited to try this fish. So we'll catch you guys back at the Hacienda. All right guys, we just got back to the Hacienda and we're gonna have the chef. So, Jamie, this is his place right here. This is Hacienda Maria Elena, right? Yes, sir. So, if you guys book an all-inclusive package, which is what he offers, he takes you guys fishing, you stay in this beautiful place, which I'm gonna show you a little bit later, and then they cook you an amazing meal. We have not had a bad meal here yet. And then we got Chef Jefe right there in the back. <laughs> We might have Jamie translating, but we're gonna have an authentic Mexican fish dinner tonight. Okay, so we're gonna cook that cubera, and we're gonna use that red sauce that we call adobo, which is a classic here in Mexico. And we're gonna cook it in the oven, in the oven slowly, and make sure it's nice and juicy. Adobo is very popular here. Okay, so chef is adding some water to the pan. Sous Chef Diego. Hola. 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 Right. Mm -hmm. It's like a mixture of oregano and stuff, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's adobo. 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 Bottom layer. Okay. 
So you guys can see that the fish is still very rare in the middle. So he's just seared the outside, developed one layer of flavor, and now he's brushing all of the uh, snapper and adobo. Let me tell you guys also, Chef makes some killer sandwiches and burritos. We have the best breakfast burritos I've ever had in my entire life on the boat every single day, thanks to this guy right here. And Salaba. Look at that Kubera, huh? Gracias. Sí. Cesar. 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 Thank you. Sí. Si? Welcome. Let's see. You get to eat chefs cooking all the time. Yes, but we don't have Cubero every day. He did a great job. Yeah, he did. Once again, very. It was a big piece and it's not dry at all. It feels wow. good, tastes amazing. As always, perfect job. Olga, it's really good. <laughs> really good. This was a giant Kubera and it is as tender as can be. It's absolutely delicious. And how cool is it to be able to catch your fish and the worst part of after you spend a long day on the water fishing all day is when you come back home and you want to eat your fish but you don't want to cook it. Well, you stay here, you fish all day, you come back and you get to eat your fish made by an amazing chef. I mean, you can't beat it. It's absolutely delicious. So, very cool experience and can't beat it. You come here, it's beautiful out here. I mean, we get to eat outside. You got parrots over there, you got a beautiful pool. We got a bunch of friends around the table and that's what it's all about. And this Kubera, I can't stand when people say that big fish or old fish are tough and not tender, that's because you might not know how to cook them. This chef did a great job of cooking this fish. Beautiful piece of Kubera right there. Really killed it with the sauce. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. Big thank you to Jamie and Olga and Mike for having us. Now if you guys are interested in booking the trip of a lifetime, not just the fishing, but this Hacienda is just beautiful in itself. I'm going to have all of their information linked below. Till the next one, see ya.